Welcome everyone, I'm Thibaut Inlo. Today I'll give you my ranking of the 24 movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with each time one word to describe the whole movie and a quick review with my own opinion. So let's start right away with the worst movie to me, which is... Number 24, Thor The Dark World. Horrible. I don't remember anything from this film. I don't like Thor. It's emotionless, it's ugly, it's boring, please, next. Number 23, The Incredible Hulk. This movie is weird as fuck. It looks like it doesn't belong to the MCU. Even if the actors are actually doing a great job, the darkness of the picture makes it look boring, except for the final battle and its epic music um, that I really enjoyed. Um, you can watch the movie, you can pass it, uh, I don't care, moving on. Number 22, Thor. Boring. A bad film around Thor, again, a character that I don't like. Uh, the villain is simply a big ugly robot that we don't care about. Some good ideas though, like putting Thor uh, back to the rank of simple human on Earth, uh, so that we can discover the character, I like that. But uh, unfortunately, this is the only thing that I actually liked about that movie. Uh, that, and of course Chris Hemsworth's muscular body. Oh, and also we discover Clint Barton, uh, a new superhero, so lame that he doesn't even have his movie today. Number 21, Iron Man 2, Ordinary. I tried to find something exciting in this movie, but it is simply the classical superhero movie that you will find out there. Uh, the villain is bad, the story is lame, the fight scenes are boring, and the scenario doesn't really make any sense. Uh, there is no stake at all. Uh, you can only enjoy Robert Downey Jr. acting and globally you don't need to watch this film uh, unless you want to know more about War Machine. Number 20, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mediocre. I had a lot of expectation for this second Ant-Man film but it is just clumsy and very quickly forgotten and has some pretty bad problems like um, the scenario. All they found to do was bring back Hope's mom. Man. <laughs> We don't care about that. Uh, the humor is also maybe too present. The only reason the film is not dead last is because I actually like Ant-Man as a character and I also like Paul Rudd. Um, the subatomic world uh, is a great idea. The action scenes are very fun and creative. You know, they play with the differences of size and we discover new mechanics and styles of fighting, uh, especially with the new villain, the ghost. But the vil this villain is just weak, uh, we don't care about her and we don't really understand why she is dying from her power and why she suddenly recovers from it. Or why the old mom has makeup on after years in the subatomic world. This film makes no sense at all. Number 19, Black Widow. Failure. Yes, the new Marvel movie isn't a success for me and lands at the 19th spot in my ranking. The beginning of this film was very good though, and really managed to catch my interest. I liked the plot about the, the origins of Black Widow, uh, also the acting was very good, uh, some music so cool, fighting scenes are violent, but I found that there is a huge difference in the atmosphere between the first part of the movie and the second one, and unfortunately the second one is not good. The Red Guardian's endless jokes just break the whole atmosphere that the duo of Natasha and Yelena uh, had, had built before. And speaking of Yelena, actually she's, to me, uh, the most well-executed character in this film. Overall, I wasn't convinced by this first film of the Phase 4 of the MCU. Um, I feel like this movie doesn't bring anything to the, um, to the universe, except for the post credit scenes, of course. And this is for me the major problem of Black Widow. It takes place between the events of Civil War and Infinity War. Knowing the fate of the character in the next films, the whole story of this movie is impacted. And we might even think about whether this film has any reason to exist. Is it legit? How can you care for the main character if you already know what's going to happen to, to them in the next movies? So that, for me, is the main problem with this, with this movie. It's the way it fits or doesn't fit in the MCU. Number 18, Captain Marvel. Interesting. The Marvel humor is too present. Most of the jokes don't work. The acting's bad. Fighting scenes are okay. 
I like that the squirrels didn't have a bad role in this movie though. Um, the global 80s atmosphere is very cool and Thalos is very cool to watch, more than Carol Danvers. Um, I also like the complicity between Carol and uh, Monica Rambeau and today we still don't know if they are just friends or if they're a couple. And finally, this movie is to me the perfect example of one of the reasons I love the MCU, which is the way this, this film fits in the universe. The film came out between Infinity War um, and Endgame, so people needed to watch it and I think that's just very clever. Number 17, Doctor Strange. Classic. This film had a lot of potential and despite the fact that we actually have a good time watching it, I personally feel that the film hasn't exploited everything imaginable. Um, basically, today, when I watch it, I just think, mm, that's just a regular superhero movie. Visually, it is beautiful, but in the MCU, I think that there is much better. Even though the actor is great as Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch is one of the best, um, the villain is forgettable as fuck, and I dare you to tell me his name right now. Number 16. Ant-Man. Fun. Paul Rudd and his crew look like the perfect actors for this comedy superhero movie. I like that the villain is Ant-Man's main antagonist, Yellow Jacket. I put this movie at this position specifically because in my opinion it just lacks seriousness and stakes to be a great superhero movie. But it remains entertaining and also the fighting scenes are new. Uh, the pen of burglars are funny, it's very cool, go watch it. Number 15, Avengers, the first. Exciting! It is the first Avenger movie and it will always remain one of the biggest success for Marvel. Um, the action is cool, the characters are badass, Hulk is actually a very interesting character in this one. All the characters work well together. What I didn't like in this film is that it feels disproportionate. We see a bunch of badass, shittery aliens invading the Earth and then an agent with a gun, a guy in tights with a shield and an archer trying to stop them. Fury should have just called Captain Marvel, it would have made more sense and don't tell me it was not an emergency. Number 14, Iron Man. Efficient. Iron Man succeeded in introducing the MCU in an effective way. We are given a very cool character, uh, the scenery of the movie is nice, the music is catchy, um, I just didn't like the villain too much, um, some of the action scenes are just meh, especially the final one. Um, they're not that great and it's a shame when you're watching a superhero movie. Uh, but Iron Man globally is the foundation of this universe, so you cannot hate this movie. Number 13, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Special. The film is a mix of different genres, um, spy, political thriller, superhero, and it completely works. Unlike Black Widow, this film succeeds perfectly in mixing genres, and the action is excellent, the interactions between the characters, Cap, Bucky, Fury, Natasha, it, it just all works. We understand that the challenge of this film are relatively high, and when we see quality fights like the one in the elevator uh, or the one on the highway, uh, we wonder why I didn't put this movie higher. In fact, it's, it is simply that, in my opinion, this film brings very little to the MCU. You can understand the whole universe without watching this one, and there's also the fact that I've never really been a fan of this kind of thriller atmosphere for a superhero movie. This one doesn't really respect the codes of other Marvel films and it's probably closer to a DC film that, with a dark atmosphere, but uh, judging this film out of this context, the MCU, I think it's just a great film. Number 12, Iron Man 3. Creative. The action in this film is crazy. You see Tony Stark flying, punching, fighting, teaching, building stuff. The only reason why this movie isn't higher in my ranking is because of the villain. The Mandarin is actually a very important villain in the story of Iron Man, but here the villain is actually a fake villain since he's not one that we know from the comics. But we have to remember that superhero movies are adaptations 
of comic books and they don't have to be a perfect replica, otherwise it wouldn't be as fun. But still, I think there was much better to do with the Mandarin as a villain uh, than just making him an imposter. Number 11. Avengers 2. Age of Ultron. Essential. First of all, I think you should watch that movie only to see the fight between Hulkbuster and the Hulk. It's very cool like any other fight in this film, which is a good point when you're watching a superhero movie. We get to meet Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, Vision, and I just love how they have been introduced in that movie, uh, since they're all in the end going to be very important pieces of the MCU. Well, except uh, Quicksilver, who will tragically die trying to save Mr. Who gives a fuck about the bowman. Overall, I just really like this movie uh, because there were many action scenes, um, they were creative and it lays the foundation for so many movies of the MCU. Uh, for example, Ragnarok, when you see Hulk leaving the Earth on the spaceship. Civil War, when you see the, the city is completely destroyed. Uh, Black Panther with all the vibranium stuff and even Infinity War uh, when you finally get to meet Thanos at the end. Um, I say this film is essential if you really want to understand uh, the whole story of the universe. Number 10, Thor Ragnarok. Surprising! I actually have mixed feelings about this one because I actually really enjoyed the Thor movie for the first time, which is big because I hate this character. And at the same time, I just hate how they made Hulk and Thor jokes. And they will keep this clownish aspect in the next film, so it really bothers me, especially when you know Hulk is the strongest Avenger. But I would rather watch another movie where Thor is a living joke than just watch another boring tragedy like the previous two movies. And the villain Hela, I think she's maybe too much of imaginary uh, so that I can actually like her but I think she's a fine villain overall. Number 9, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Beautiful. I, I, I love the atmosphere of this film. The new musics are so cool. The relations between all the Guardians are fun and cute. It's, it's a beautiful film. The opening is extraordinary. You just see this little baby Groot guy dancing in front of a big fighting scene. It's just cool, I love it. However, since I was a big fan of the first one, I had high expectations on the second film and I was a bit disappointed when I saw that they gave Quill superpowers just to take them away from him right at the end of the film and I don't think the characters are evolving anymore uh, unlike the first one where they could see them growing together we don't have this here Number 8 Spider-Man Far From Home Amazing Some people hate the humor in this movie but I personally enjoyed watching all the teachers struggling to be responsible Although I just really hate how they made Flash Thompson, this character is just a disaster. I think Mysterio is one of the best villains in the MCU and his creation is very surprising. In fact, Mysterio in this movie is much more than just one villain. He represents all the negative consequences that Tony Stark and his company have had on the employees and the whole world. Also, Far From Home is very well introduced in the MCU thanks to the presence of other characters like Fury, Moria, Hill. Uh, happy and if you went until the end the squirrels. Speaking of additional scenes, I think Far From Home has the best additional scene in the entire MCU as we find J.K. Simmons as James Jonathan Jameson who will publicly reveal the real identity of Spider-Man. Number 7. Spider-Man Homecoming. Fresh! First of all, Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man ever, period. Now, there are so many reasons to love this movie. Tom Holland, as I said, Michael Keaton as the Vulture, who is one of the best villains in the MCU, um, the cool young vibe throughout the whole movie, the relationship between Tony and Peter, and of course, Aunt May, who has now become an LLM. A nice looking mom. And one last detail. Again, I am a big fan of how this movie especially makes his way into the MCU. It's beautiful. This movie takes place after the events of Civil War and is going to lay the foundations of a strong mentor-student relationship between Peter and Tony and the latter playing the role of a father figure for Spidey. It's not just a story about one superhero, it's a story that fits in a bigger one, the MCU story. We can't regret though the lack of exciting action scenes, um, the side characters that are not very exciting, 
the Marvel humor may be a little bit too prison, but overall I really enjoyed that movie. Number 6, Black Panther, unique. Black Panther is my second favorite superhero after Spider-Man, but here it is, ahead of the two Spider-Man movies, because it's unique. This is the first time that we have a film adaptation about Black Panther and I really liked it. I like a lot of things about this movie. The scenes in Wakanda, the music, the villain Killmonger, so charismatic, the ritual fights, the advanced technologies balanced with their old way of living, the costumes, the political issues and some action scenes, but not all of them unfortunately. The final fight is for me the worst part because I didn't like this tasteless fight full of technology and I think they could have done something way better. Number 5. Guardians of the Galaxy. Awesome. Okay, so what I loved about this movie was of course the music. I am a big fan of this style of music of the 70s like Come and Get Your Love, Fold Around and Love and of course the Pina Colada song. Um, the music just plays a huge role in the movie and when it's mixed with funny and entertaining action scenes it just makes a wonderful combo, you're just having fun the whole time. The other great thing about this movie is the characters. They're funny, unique and they just have a great chemistry together and better than the Avengers for example. The heroic scenes are touching, the movie is visually beautiful, some of the actions are just new and that is why this movie brings a whole new atmosphere, a new vibe to the MCU. The only negative point I would bring is towards the villain. Ronan the Accuser, if you remember. Um, in my opinion, he's not remarkable, he has a fake charisma and his motivations are just unclear. Number 4. Captain America First Avenger. Legendary. I think this movie would not have made my top 10 a few months ago, but you know, it's one of these movies that just gets better the more you watch them. When you watch a superhero movie today, you will find a lot of anti-heroes, you know, this kind of superheroes that are not perfect, like Deadpool, Venom, uh, The Hulk, uh, Wolverine, you got so many. And I find that sometimes these characters get a little blurred together, because, you know, it's trendy to be sarcastic, mean, or whatever. And Captain America First Avenger is a film about the opposite of these characters. It's a film about the greatest superhero ever. Later, if I want to show my kid a superhero movie, there is a good chance it's going to be that one. Uh, because everything in this movie is just great. The character, the general atmosphere, uh, the villain, the music, the action scenes are just great. And finally, the romance uh, between Captain America and Peggy Carter, the, the first in Infinity Stone. It's just a simple film, but with a very effective story. Number 3. Avengers Infinity War. Fantastic! I had high expectations actually when I went to see this film in the theaters, but I was not disappointed at all because the action is great. Finally we get to see the Guardians of the Galaxy working with the Avengers. Uh, we finally see Thanos, a charismatic and powerful villain with a real motivation and very precise objectives. The music is great, the stakes are higher than ever. The action scenes are successful because they're ingenious and we get to see our superhero actually lose in, for the first time with no idea about how they're gonna fix this situation. But unfortunately, there is one thing that makes me not put this film high in my ranking. It's the treatment of Hulk and Thor. Um, they just suffer from the comical side that Thor Ragnarok gave to them. And I'm not saying that they should be serious all the time, no, 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 I, we don't want another DC failure, but, you know, in my opinion, there is too much of Marvel humor in this one. And again, this movie is just supposed to be a tragedy. Actually, a tragedy that ultimately brings about the unique aspect of this film, the defeat of the Avengers. So, this first defeat in the superhero film, in my opinion, makes this film so unique. A lot of people are gonna hate me there. Number 2. Captain America 3 Civil War. I just love this movie for many personal reasons. The main one is that they finally introduce Spidey and Black Panther in this one. And like I said, they're my favorite characters. 
I just also fell in love with some of the action scenes in this one, when Spidey steals Captain America's shield, when Ant-Man becomes Giant Man, when Black Panther chases Bucky in the underground, when Rhodes does the... Uh, no, no, no Rhodes, no, no, definitely not that. Rhodes? No. What I liked a lot about this movie though, was Zemo. The villain deprived of superpowers but not of motivation. He is a strong character who will later have actually a second chance in the new show Falcon and the Winter Soldier that I encourage you to watch right now. And of course at the first place we find Avengers Endgame. Epic. With no surprise here, my favorite film of the MCU is Avengers Endgame. This film represents the pinnacle of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is the movie with the most stakes. We don't anticipate anything. Well, except of this time traveling thing, of course, that was predictable when you had watched uh, Ant-Man 2. But the action scenes are all memorable. Thanos is Thanos, a great villain. The endings of Tony and Cap's characters are very touching and in a global way. The entire film is touching, especially at the death of some characters or during some confrontations. The only thing that I regret though is the treatment of the characters of the Hulk and Thor, um, who are again two jokes during the entire film and they, they deserve so much better than that. So that's it guys, that was my ranking of the 24 movies in the MCU. Uh, write me in the comment section, tell me what's your ranking, what you would have done different. You can share the video to your friends, uh, like the video if you liked it. Uh, hope to see you guys soon and as always, be in luck!